All right, hang on. I'm not streaming yet, I know. I'm not streaming yet. All right, now I'm gonna start streaming. Hi everyone, welcome to um, Google Classroom Intermediate. So if you did not join us this morning for the basic session, the recording of that session is already posted. So if you are a newbie to Google Classroom, you may want to check that one out first as this one is going to start sort of mid-thought process, if you will. Um, but I'm Megan Swope. I am the second one of the secondary ed tech coaches. I work predominantly at the high school in Pennsbury High School. I'm joined today by um, some of my ed tech colleagues, Sandy Candravi, Ray Short, Maureen Gradle, and Mike Herman, who will be helping to moderate questions that you guys have. So as we go to take a look at, as we go to take a look at Google Classroom, I'm gonna to start to share my screen here with you. Um, in looking at the intermediate level of Google Classroom, um, obviously we know why we're all here. We can only address humor at this point because there's nothing else we can do for this situation. Um, I already mentioned I was an instructional coach um, since this fall. I've been a socialized teacher at Pennsbury High School since 1999. I'm also a Google certified trainer. So you can feel free to reach out to me with any questions that you have after the presentation is over. Um, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, all of the resources for this presentation are also found on the same spreadsheet, essentially, that you use to access this live stream. You can also, for the next 24 hours, use this, I apologize, use this link, www.yellkey.com slash final. What this takes you to is to this virtual schedule, and we're in the Google Classroom Intermediate session right now. You can see that there are a couple of things you're gonna look for. One is the link to, to ask live questions. You can also click for resources. What the resource link gives you is essentially your own copy of this Google Slides presentation that has some links within it. And the CQ&A actually takes you to the Google Sheet that is gonna be propagated by the questions that you're asking in the live Q&A. So you can check that out for answers and for other people's questions as this is going on. With that being said, our targets for today about Google Classroom are really taking a look at some of the next level features of Google Classroom, ways to personalize this, ways to use this with your students. Um, we're gonna look at how you can personalize, how you can schedule posts, which is useful all the time, but especially in this world of distance learning at this point, how to post to multiple classes at once, how to give different assignments to different students based on student need, interest, et cetera how you can reuse posts either from your own classes or from a colleague's class, how to communicate with students, how to use a feature called the to-do list to help keep yourself organized as a teacher so you know what assignments you have and haven't looked at, how to use something called the comment bank in the grading panel, which essentially allows you to write canned comments and then just using a couple quick letters be able to use all of the comments in your comment bank um, so you can give better feedback to the students and use rubrics. I apologize, my clicking is all over the place here. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna be working predominantly out of a live window of Google Classroom here. So earlier today we talked about how you set up a class, how you add people to your class and so forth and so on. And you can see I have a wide variety of classes here. Um, in fact, I'm just gonna go into um, my class for college recommendations, my poor class of 2020 here. Um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna choose a different class, I lied. Um, so let's go into, um, let's go into my social studies department class, even though the students are technically other people, that way you can see some of the features that we're gonna be talking about. So one of the, one of the things that we talked about earlier is how you can adjust 
the heading up here at the top. You can see for this class, for instance, I have a specific picture of our department. In order to personalize that for you, when you when a new Google Classroom is created, that heading is randomized. I created a new classroom this morning and it was a tennis court. So as a social studies teacher, that probably wouldn't really help me. You can very easily change that by either selecting one of the pre-made themes that Google Classroom has available. So I very simply, just to show you how I got to this, again, in my classroom, I clicked select theme. And I can pick one of the pre-made ones they have. They aren't super fancy, but they tend to do the trick. Um, and obviously this is kind of low budget for yourselves. In fact, let me go, um, I wanna go to a class where I don't have a problem changing the heading. So if I go to my ed tech coach class, if I decide I wanna make this my header, I can click select class theme and it changes my header. I can also, personalize this any way I want by selecting any photo from my computer. So let's say I don't like any of their headers, but I find a picture I do like. Maybe I like this image from Google Images. I can save this image to my desktop. You can't, unfortunately, you cannot search directly from, from the, um, window here, but I can then just very simply drag this picture in and it does not like that one because it's telling me that one is too small, which does sometimes happen. So let's try this one. You can see it is a little particular about sizing. That one it likes. It lets me crop it however I want. I can hit select class theme and now there is that picture. It does when you pick your own one mask it a little bit. looks like it almost has a gray film over that. I have no idea why. Um, with that being said, we're now going to take a look at, from within the Classwork tab, how you can manage some of the posting options that you have for your, within Google Classroom. Um, so one of those things, if, if I'm going to create a new assignment, and I'm going to call this a, you know, I'm just going to give this a name, a test assignment. In the earlier post, I described how you can add instructions, how you can add all kinds of documents and so forth and so on. I can give this a due date. One of the options I have when I go to post this assignment is I can certainly click assign, which would assign it now. However, if I click this little arrow over here next to the assign button, it gives me the option to schedule that post. And that is true whether I'm posting an assignment or a material or a question, any of the create options allow me to schedule a post. It will let me select a specific date and time. So if I'm looking to post something at eight o'clock on Monday morning, doesn't like me doing this right now because I selected a due date that was too far out. So let me try that. And I'm now going to schedule this for eight o'clock again on Monday morning. That's Sunday. Let's try Monday. And I can click schedule. What happens is you can see in my stream, this says test assignment scheduled for March 30th at eight o'clock a.m. One of the great things about that is that it will automatically post. I will in fact get an email at eight o'clock on Monday morning that my test assignment posted. So in this world of distance learning, you can pre-fill assignments from to post at particular times on particular dates. I'm gonna jump back over here to my chat because it looked like there was a question. How do you turn off notifications from your buddy's class? Um, I did actually address that in the, in the earlier presentation today. So I would suggest if you go to the virtual PD schedule, you can go watch the video from the session archive from that first class. So with that being said, getting back into my Google Classroom window, I apologize for that. Not only was I able to show you how I can schedule posts, I can also post to multiple classes at once. So I'm gonna go back into the same test assignment and I'm gonna, uncheck that from being scheduled because I want to be able to show you what else I can do with this. As I'm creating this assignment, 
over here on the right hand side, and again, this will all be true whether I'm talking about an assignment, a material, a question, any of the create options. You'll notice that it says four. Well, the default is to post this to the classroom in which you are currently residing. However, if I click this little arrow, you know, one, this is one of Google's key symbols that lets you know there's something else there. Click on it, nothing to be gained or lost. It now brings up a list of all of the classrooms I'm part of. So if I want to post this to multiple classes, if I want to post this to the middle school ed tech team, I need to post this to AP European history, I can check all of those boxes. And it's now going to go to three different classes. So whether I so when I click assign, it would go to all three of those classes. Now you will notice, however, and this is unfortunately one of the weaknesses of Classroom right now. You can always submit this as something as feedback for them to add. You can only schedule something to post in one class at a time. So unfortunately, if I'm looking to assign the same assignment to three classes simultaneously. I can only either save that as a draft or assign that live. I cannot schedule that post. What I can do, however, if I am looking to, I'm going to come out of here for a second. If I'm looking to, for instance, take this test assignment and I want to schedule it both in this class and in my middle school class, Another feature I can use is what's called the reuse post feature. So if I go to the classwork tab in the second class, if I hit create and I go down to reuse post, it will bring up a window of all of my classes. You will notice it is lengthy because these are both current and archived classes. So what I need to select is the class where the assignment currently is so I can reuse that in another class. Not only is this useful, by the way, for scheduling posts to multiple classes, this is also incredibly useful as we enter distance learning if you are borrowing assignments from other teachers. The buddy system is huge. So if I'm gonna go to this EdTech coach class, because I know that's where the assignment was that I just created, it will then bring up my whole list of assignments. They are in chronological order with the newest assignments that have been posted up at the top. So here's my test assignment. I simply click on it. Click the button to reuse. Do not click this create new copies of all attachments. What that does is kind of makes a mess out of your Google Drive. You can use the same attachments that when you repost this. So I'm gonna click reuse. And it now takes me to basically the same assignment window, but I'm now in a different class. So if I need to add different directions maybe for this class or they get a different link or it's due at a different time, I can then post this assignment as a copy to this new class, okay? Um, one of the other abilities, and I'm gonna again, go back to my EdTech coach class here. One of the other abilities in terms of it, the ability to, differ, to differentiate assignments is I'm going to go back into our test assignment here. Um, this lets me, actually, you know what, let me go into a different classroom where I have multiple students because this will be easier to see here. So let's say I'm gonna create an assignment within the social studies department because we have plenty of teachers. So I'm posting this to the social studies department. I can give it a title, I can add directions, I can add Google Drive links, files, and so forth and so on. The default when you post assignments is that all students in the class get the assignment. However, you can change that because just as I was able to select which classes this gets posted to, I can also select which students get this assignment. So I can say, well, you know, Kurt is not going to get this assignment, but everyone else is. I can say, I only want Mary, Eric, and Lisa to get this assignment. This is a fantastic tool for being able to differentiate to students. So if you have some students who need to do one assignment, some students who need to do another, you can easily manage this. While you as the teacher will be able to see all of these assignments. If I were to post an assignment 
and only post this to Ken David, which I'm going to do, and Ken David is probably going to wonder why he's about to get an email from me. Um, when I assign this to him, he is the only one in the entire class who will see that assignment. What this means is you could technically have a topic under which the assignments are all assigned to one student or a small group of students. This is a great way to differentiate for students with accommodations and modifications. Only those students will see those assignments. Moving beyond, let me delete this from Ken so he's not wondering what the heck that is. Um, moving beyond the posting of assignments and some of the some of the abilities there. There are also tremendous communication tools with students via Google Classroom. And there are a lot of different ways you can do this. First and foremost, posting assignments is communicating with the students in and of itself. You can also, on any given assignment, add a class comment. So let me back up and show you how I got to that. So in, a, in an assignment that I already posted, let's say I posted an assignment and I start getting a lot of the same questions from people about that assignment. And I realized that maybe I made a mistake and I need to say, hey kids, I, I messed up, please take a look at this. I can click on this assignment. I'm going to click view assignment, which does default to the grading window. But if I click where it says instructions, you notice that there is now a box for class comments. If I start typing in here, it now gives me the ability to send this, which I am not actually going to do so my department doesn't wonder why I'm crazy. I also have the ability to send private comments to students. That comes, again, from several different places. One is from within an assignment. If I click on any student's name, I can add a private comment. Let me hide this so you can see what I'm doing here. I can add a private comment that will only go to that particular student. So the key is looking for the words private versus class. A class comment is something everyone can see. If a student puts a class comment, everyone can see it. A private comment is an individual dialogue between the teacher and the student. You can do this from any assignment. What I advise is if you're trying to communicate with a student about a particular assignment. So if I'm going back into my classwork tab and a student asks me a question about, you know, the winter 2020 keystone schedule. And I want to add a, that's a bad example. That was a material. I apologize. Um, if I want to communicate with them about the August 20th department meeting, I can specifically communicate with them about that particular assignment. One of the other places you can communicate with students is directly through the stream. This is a great place for just a message. I do not advise posting assignments here. I did explain that in my earlier session today, if you would like to go back and rewatch that. But this is just a quick shout out. Hey guys, how are you doing during this COVID crisis? Just checking in. I can also go to the People tab. And from the People tab, I have the option to email students directly. I can either email an individual student. I can select a handful of students. And by clicking Action, I can email them. I can email like the whole lot of them directly from there. Now, this is obviously assuming the students are actually checking their email, which is an entirely different conversation, but I can certainly email them from, from there. So there are just a handful of other topics I wanted to show you, and I apologize that these are somewhat random, um, but these are, as I said, intermediate topics. One of them that I have found to be one of the most useful is what's called the to-do list. Um, this is, for those of you who are list makers, this is a godsend because this is a way you can kind of keep track of which assignments you have dealt with and which ones you haven't. The to-do list is found at the, on the forefront of every Google Classroom page that you have. On the In the top left corner, you have this little box here where it shows what the upcoming work is. 
but there's this link that says view all. And what this takes you to is a page of all of the assignments from that class with the options to review versus reviewed. As a classroom teacher, I used this methodically to keep track of which ones did I take a look at. So if I've already graded, for instance, the September 11th webinar, I can come over here to the three dots, click Mark as reviewed, and it takes it off my to-do list. Now it doesn't disappear. It's still on the stream in the classroom. This doesn't affect the student view at all. This is purely for teacher use to manage your workflow. If I made a mistake and I marked it as reviewed, but I need to go back and mark it as not reviewed, I simply click on the reviewed tab. Here are the assignments that says I reviewed and I can undo that. It looks like there was a question that came in. Let me take a look. How do you save? Google Docs that allow students to edit, answer the questions on the document themselves. Um, so that's by making a copy of the document for each individual student. Um, that is a feature I talked about in the basic one. Is there a way to share the classroom with other teachers but not allow them to edit? Not really. So you can make them students in your class, but then they are unable to um, posts, they aren't able to reuse any of your posts. They can just see what you're posting. Some of this comes down to, I think, you know, just professional courtesy. And do students get an email to notify them that you sent a private comment? Yes, they do. If they have their notification settings turned on. Again, I covered that in the basic session earlier today. Um, and again, that also depends on the students actually checking their email. So I was just showing you the, the to-do list. I then want to show you two features with respect to grading assignments. Um, and let me go into, I'm going to actually go into a sample class here. Yeah, sure. Let me just go back to the social studies one. Um, because I want to show you some options as you go to, to grade. So first of all, one of the newer features that Google Classroom has introduced this year when you are creating a new assignment is the option to add a rubric. Um, in order to add a rubric, you must first give the assignment a title, as you can see. And then over here on the right-hand side, there's this option to add a rubric. And you can create a rubric. Once you've made a rubric for one class or one assignment that allows you to reuse a rubric, or if you would like to make the rubric in sheets, there are templates where you can import the rubric from sheets. I'm just gonna go to create rubric as kind of an intermediate option here. And you'll notice that this takes you to a very basic rubric creation. So if you're thinking of a typical grid rubric, you know, I can call this criteria one, um, you know, level title basic, I can add a description, and then I can start to add as many criteria and levels within that criteria as I want to. So if I'm using a four point rubric, I can add, you know, you can get a, between a one and a four for criteria one, I can add a description. I can add another criteria. And again, I can do the same thing. two, three, four. If I'd wanted to add on this end a zero for whatever reason, I can certainly do that. And then you can see it's automatically calculating the point value for that rubric. So when I hit save, students, when you make this assignment, would be able to see this rubric. So there's nothing hidden. The students can see what the rubric is, what the criteria are that you had described. Obviously, I did not type a whole lot in here, so this would be more fleshed out had you actually explained things to them. So they know how they're being assessed as, you're, as they're completing the assignment. When you go to grade an assignment using a rubric, the rubric then does appear, and you can simply check boxes, if you will, to grade students on that using that rubric. The, the last thing I want to show you is within the grading panel, something called the comment bank. So I'm going to go to 
an assignment. And again, this is just a random assignment here. Actually, let me go to one that people might have actually had to turn something in for. Let me go to a different class. This will be an easier way to see this. So if I'm going down to, um, you know, an assignment I did with students back in September, and this was a, you know, they had to do an Instagram assignment. You will see that as I open the assignment, I can see the student's work. If I click on a copy of a student's work or a piece of student work, it takes me into what's called the grading panel, where I can, you know, move things around. I have full editing rights here. I can type things in the speaker notes. I can add a comment to this if I need to, to say, you know, hey, let's work on, you know, try this. I'm not actually gonna do this so the student doesn't get this live. I can add a private comment over here. One of the fantastic features of Google Classroom though is this comment bank, which if you're in this grading panel is this little speech bubble over here that allows you to put any number of comments that you want in this comment bank. Particularly those of you who are grading writing, this is fabulous. You can simply add something to the comment bank by clicking add to bank. You can type whatever your comment, you want your comment to be in this box. You can see from some of my samples, there's, you know, it doesn't just have to be a couple of words. It can be a couple of sentences. To use those comments, and this is where the tool is very, very powerful. Once I'm in the document, if I highlight something and I click to make a new comment, I can type hashtag and start to type a comment. So maybe if I'm writing something about their thesis, Google Classroom automatically, I'm sorry, automatically detects what comments I have that said thesis in them, and I can just pick them and then click comment. And again, I'm not actually going to do that because the student, I don't want the student to get this comment. The value of doing that is that as you start to know your own comments, let's face it, we all type the same things to students all the time. You can create these canned comments. It's giving the students fantastic feedback with minimizing the amount that you're having to type over and over and over again. So especially in this world of distance learning, this is a really great resource for you. So, at this point, let me go back to my question panel here. So what are your thoughts on inviting parents into Google Classroom so they can view announcements? Um, I'm a little torn on that. The, the parent guardian summaries in Google Classroom, quite frankly, are very limited. Um, it, if parents are understanding what they're seeing in the Google Classroom summaries, that Sometimes assignments will show up that they're missing, even though the student did them in another way. Um, you can certainly do that. It can spark good conversation at home. It does not give the parents the ability to actually access the documents you're posting. It doesn't give them the access to, um, it doesn't give them the access to actually see what's in the Google Classroom. It just gives them sort of a superficial snapshot of the titles of assignments and directions you've posted. Um, is there a trick to uploading MP3 tracks? So the MP3 tracks, my the best advice I can give you is to upload those to Drive first, because then once you're uploading something to Drive, you can then, let me go to a test class, um, you can then upload any, any link that you have on Google Drive. Um, for instance, I'm just doing this one because this is one I know that I have an, as an audio file, if I can actually find it. Um, there it is. So right there is an MP3 broadcast, um, a rose by any other name. And if I click on that, it does give me the ability to add that right there. Are there any other questions? Because I know we've really kind of reached the end of our half hour here. Ray and Maureen, anything that I missed that you want to chime in about?
we good? Okay. So in that case, again, if you go the, the, in the resources tab, I do have some links here that can help you with this. This one, by the way, that says tips using Google Classroom for distance learning also has some great resources to help parents and students through this. And thank you for tuning in. I do encourage you to click the link to do the feedback form. I know a lot of people are asking about Act 48. I can't speak to that right now, but it can't hurt to do the feedback form. All right, Pensbury, have a great day.